I'm going to go over how I do my basic setup to get ready to do a new project. Um, pretty much it's just setting up my VM, imaging it with uh, my image server, and uh, setting any drive specials and IP address and host name and, and that sort of thing. That's what we're going to go through today. Um, and the plan is to get into um, doing something like a, a custom WoW server or a seven-day server or even just a web server or something like that. Uh, but the initial thing, of course, is to get the um, OS installed. And this time we're going to do Linux, uh, Ubuntu 20. Uh, before I get there, though, I, I did a few videos um, in the past week or so, uh, maybe two now about uh, different WoW things, uh, WoW, WoW private servers, and we were working with um, a single player project last week. And before there were a lot of crashes in it, and now with the new version, it's been running, let's see, probably four or five days now without a crash. Um, it is taking 26 gig of memory, uh, but I'm not too surprised. I bet you if I only had um, 24 gig, it would be using 19 you know, just reserving some. Um, but it seems to be working. I am noticing a lot of red errors here, but it, it, it's still working. I'm not going to complain. Um, but with the memory usage, I would probably suggest restarting it like every couple days if you run in one. Really, if you run in the single player project and you run it by yourself, you could probably just turn it off when you're not playing it. That simple, really. I, I mean, we're, we're trying to do stuff here that might not be in the scope of the idea, but it's doable. Anyway, back to the task at hand. So we're in my ESXi server right now, and I uh, quick go over the specs. Um, I have uh, 16 cores, um, two processors, eight cores each with um, hyper-threading, so I have 32 threads. Um, and it, VMware measures gigahertz, so I have a total of 28 free right now. Uh, I have 128 gigs of RAM. I only have 37 free right now. Uh, it's I'm going to need to increase that. I didn't think, I thought I was going to be okay because I really don't run a lot here. But when I started adding my SQL servers and up to a file server and an IIS server and all that, things started getting a little crazy on me. Um, and right now I have seven terabytes of free space. Um, a little over nine in total, over 12 drives. And I got one spare right now, and I'm going to have eight more, I think, coming in next week or the week after. So I'm going to have like 20 drives and 18 terabytes, and uh, I can show you my speed uh, at some point, just not today because that's not what we're doing. Okay, so first thing we need to do is create the virtual machine. Real easy. Uh, hit the Create button. Create new, give it a name. We're just going to call this, uh, I'm going to call it AC test. We might play with Azeroth core. And set the Linux, Ubuntu 64. Next, select our host since we're really my array is faster than a standalone <laughs> SATA. Um, the access time is slower, but it's barely noticeable. It's overall, it's faster than a standalone SSD. Anyway, okay, continuing on. And we're going to give it eight cores because we're probably going to be doing some compiling on this. And we're going to give it 16 gigs of RAM because I'm starting to run a little low. And we leave the hard disk the same, even though we're going to be using a lot more. And uh, we'll get into that later. Uh, and for the CD drive, we just want to unconnect that. We're just going to, yeah, we're just going to remove it all together. We're not going to be using it to install anything. And that's it for this section. We got to go up to options though. This is very important if you're running a imaging server. Um, you have to make sure what, which, uh, infrastructure you're using. If you're using EFI or BIOS, I use EFI. So I have to go in here and change it every time. And then I check a uh, force BIOS, so it gives me the menu to choose which um, which method of boot I want. Uh, and then next, and finish. 
Okay, so I now have my virtual machine here. And now that we got that done, we're gonna switch over to VMware Workstation. VMware Workstation is awesome. It doesn't have everything that the web interface has, but the usage is much better. Um, yeah, I need to get more memory. I did have 128 gigs on order, but I haven't received it yet, and I'm having doubts I'm going to get it. Okay, so we're powering it on. It's going to pop up giving the menu option, and we want to select network. And this is my fog server picking up. Fog is my imaging server. I mostly did this for um, Windows 10 and Windows Server, especially Windows Server. Um, what I ended up doing was installing all the updates and then creating a capture image because uh, Server 12 has a lot of updates if you have one of the earlier versions and it takes forever to update. So. I did, I did that. And kind of the same thing for Windows 10. I um my ISO for it was really old, so I got I created a new one, updated it, put the did a capture, and so now when I have to do updates, it's not that big of a deal. But I really don't use Windows 10 for anything. So this is mostly server stuff. We're gonna select Ubuntu. And now we just sit and wait. Once I get started here, I'll uh, just shut up and fast forward. Because I know as soon as I stop, as soon as I close the mic down, it's going to uh, break on me. And there we go. It'll do... Um, all the partitions and the primary partition. It's only a 16 gig drive, so it doesn't take too long, but um, still, it takes like five minutes. So I'm gonna just stop the mic here, and when I process this, I'll fast forward it, and we'll be back. Okay, it's just about done. When it's done here, it'll uh, reboot the system and take you to your prompt. If everything goes the way it's supposed to. And nine times out of ten it does. If you're familiar with any other network Pixie Boot installs, it's pretty much the same. I need to change that though so it doesn't pop up all the time. Okay, and there we are. And I have it pre-configured with the user, so I'm just going to go ahead and log in. And there we go. Now, even though this is a uh, newer install with most of the updates installed, the um, there's a lot of updates still. So what we still need to do is update the host name and update the IP address. And that should be pretty quick here. So the first thing we're going to do is the host name. And that's just, um, let me see, host main control. And I think, and we're just gonna do a C test, I think is what it is. Uh, let's see.
Let's see. It is set host. And there we go, AC test. And now we're going to set up the network. Now, before, most systems I've used, Linux systems I've used recently in the past couple of years use NetPlan. I hate NetPlan, but it, it works. Um, so if we uh, cat the NetPlan, You'll see the Ethernet um, adapter is ENS32 at the bottom there, but chances are that's not what it is um, in the Linux system. It's just whatever was there whenever I did the capture. So we need to see what the new one is. So we just do IP space oops, IP space A, and you'll see number two there says INS60. So we're just going to sudo nano etc net plan. Whoops. You see net plan zero, zero. Make sure you sudo it, otherwise, you won't be able to make any changes. We'll just change this to 160. Control O to save, Control X, and we just do a sudo net plan apply. And we have, and we do it IP dash or space A again. And now we have a routable IP address of uh, 192.168.0.120 slash 24 for the subnet. Looks good. And we'll just ping um, duck, duck, go. Nope. Uh, they must uh, not allow it. You got the name resolution, so it worked out anyway. All right. So now we do um, sudo apt update to update the repositories. This is just all, well, mostly basic stuff you do whenever you create a, a new image. The only thing different is I used an image server instead of installing it manually. Um, so you got 48 packages. Uh, and it's just a little bit faster. You just have uh, a couple hoops to jump through with the way I have it configured, with just setting the host name and um, the network up uh, right away. And then if you want any more storage space, you'll have to manually do that, which we are going to do in the next video. We're going to add another drive and mount it. and hopefully that won't take too long um i don't know <laughs> hopefully it's a a small video if it if it's a really small video i'll just attach it at the end of this okay so we need to do sudo apt update or up, upgrade and i got nothing but the basic stuff on here no php no python no um web server no nothing it's just flat Linux server. I guess it does have Python on it. That's kind of the fault, I suppose. But uh, this might take a minute or two, so I am going to turn off the mic again and be back. Just like Microsoft, it always gets near the end and then pauses. But the nice thing about uh, apt is it doesn't go backwards on you. At least I haven't seen it go backwards yet. Um, one thing we want to do too is we're going to, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Uh, you know, I honestly don't know for Ubuntu 20. Um, but we have that wait timer. Oh, wrong button. Um, we have that wait timer when we first boot. And I think we can just edit it in the grub file. Um, let's see. 
you see uh, grub um, which one is it that OS prober maybe that's not it Let's just CD there and see. Okay, the timeout's already zero. Um, Okay, so let's just do sudo update grub. Okay. And since we did all those up, I don't know if that worked or not. Since we did all those updates, we're just going to go ahead and reboot. I don't think you need sudo to do it, but... Might as well. I'm just curious if the timeout is still there. Nope. Good. Okay, so there we go. Looks like we are good. Or, nope, 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 nope. That's not the right password. Oh, yeah, it is. So, yeah, there we go. We got all our information, IP address, and everything. So, we're good to go. I'm going to go ahead and stop here. Um, and if the adding the drive video is short, I'll just plop it at the end of this. Um, we're just going to add the drive, mount the drive, format the drive. And I think that's all. So yeah, it should fit at the end of this video without too much of an issue, uh, especially if it's sped up. So, yep, uh, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.